you are a teacher you are a leader you are a policy maker you are an ias officer you are a professor uh, you are now designing future courses and all entrepreneurship a great uh, experience today coming to Rishihud and seeing a university which is so focused on developing responsible Indians, proud Indians and not merely imparting course curriculum as many of our universities have got reduced to. For, uh, for coming to university. It's always a learning experience uh, to, uh, to converse with you. A remarkable persona. Uh, you are a teacher, you are a leader, you are a policy maker, you are an IS officer, you are a professor, uh, you are now designing future courses and now entrepreneurship and that too, the, the, the most hardcore part of entrepreneurship which is venture capitalism and that too venture capitalism in defense and aerospace and it's the hardcore, hardcore part of uh, deep tech. So thank you for giving us opportunity uh, to have a conversation. Students would love that and any, anyone who is going to hear our conversation, hopefully they will be encouraged to see the future image of, uh, of uh, academia, future image of our country from a policy perspective, future image from a strategic uh, areas of uh, defense, aerospace, industry, manufacturing, et cetera, et cetera. And also the core part, uh, uh, which I, was mesmerized when, when I was uh, hearing uh, you talk, is India and Indians' journey from being proud Indian, that is pride to responsibility. Uh, first comments on, 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 on those, Ajit. Thank you, Raviji. So uh, it's, uh, it's been a great uh, experience today coming to Rishihud and seeing a university which is so focused on developing responsible Indians proud Indians and not merely imparting course curriculum as many of our universities have got reduced to. You know, talking about myself, you know, I mean, you mentioned so many things. You know, I look at it in a very simple way, you know. I'm only doing things which I enjoy. Mm. I enjoyed being part of the government for 38 years. And now I enjoy, you know, uh, things. Uh, I do things which I enjoy and which I really believe in. So that's something uh, I think is, uh, which is possibly a great uh, driver in itself because if you enjoy doing things, you really don't re realize what all you are doing. So mm -hmm. yeah, that is something which I do. Uh, with respect to uh, the question uh, which you said, can you just repeat it again? Because I the, so <laughs> lost I the so, track. So, so, so I was mesmerized <laughs> because today is an Independence Day. Uh, so, day of celebration, but it is also a, a day of reflection also. That's right. You know, you know. Yeah, that's right. So. Yeah, so the point is, you know, I mean, today we are very happy and seeing, uh, you know, for the first time, uh, growth at unprecedented levels. Mm. Uh, economic growth, people are seeing levels of prosperity. Mm. Uh, uh, there is optimism uh, for India, not only within India, but outside across the globe. And we do see clear, uh, you know, road signs of we would be a reasonably developed country in the future. When you bring this interesting aspect, um, I'll just put this into words character building. And we, we were talking and I was, uh, we were talking about it. That there are examples in India of institutions which actually build remarkable character. You have mentioned about um, you, you, you were closely associated in building and modernization of uh, Indian Defense Forces uh, uh, yourself. So you have seen with very, very closed eyes uh, uh, that what it takes to build a, a character of, uh, of, of a Jawan. And I think this is exactly what I was uh, implying, you know, when I said, you know, that this is what you learn in your education system. Huh. Uh, this chalta attitude hmm. or if you are rich and powerful you what you learn is that you can get away by breaking rules hmm. uh, you know uh, you you know you and again i don't want to name cities but uh, you know uh, we see a lot of people who think that you know rules are meant to be broken hmm. and they pride themselves in hmm. it you know because they think that uh, even if they are caught they can always hmm. 
either buy or influence their way out of it. Hmm. Now, this is all result of a faulty value system which has come from what they have learned. I mean, people hmm. are not born that way. Hmm. They learn it, acquire these things uh, from their uh, peers, from their family, from the education system. And I think this is what really needs to be changed. And it can be changed. And that's why I said education is so important. If you look at armed force, for example, the timing, you mentioned about timing. You know, if you look at, uh, you know, when I worked in defense ministry, I realized how much of discipline armed forces have with respect to making sure that things happen on time. You mentioned wish for guru and uh, we are talking about education. You yourself have designed uh, courses, which are uh, courses for future. Ravi, so when I graduated and maybe even when you graduated, when we grew up, we knew our subject and we were reasonably good at it. But we had very poor understanding of what was happening in the world, mm. in various parts of the world. Mm. Except broadly that we were, you know, the West was developed and, mm. you know, mm. there were two major streams of mm. thought, you know, the uh, one was the uh, capitalist stream and second was the socialist communist stream of economic development. I mean, across, beside, beyond a broad understanding of the world landscape, mm. the nuances of the global geopolitics was not understood. Mm. Why I say this is today, India has become a global player. Mm. Yeah. What we do uh, more than before, at least for more th uh, in the last 200, 300 years, mm. more than uh, before, it matters. Mm. Second is technology has made the world into a much smaller place. Mm. So you are in contact with the rest of the world more than ever before. In this globalized context, the kind of lack of information, understanding and knowledge of the global uh, context and dynamics uh, is possibly something which a youth of today cannot afford. Add to it the fact that if you want to be a Vishwa Guru or something, contribute to the global good, hmm. then all the more it is important to be having a much greater understanding. So the point I'm making is, I think the fact that uh, how what we are doing and how that is to be seen in the context of the world is become very important. And that's what something which I have designed hmm. in the context of the course which I am teaching at IIT Kanpur, uh, that how economic growth, when we're looking largely at the economic perspective, is impacted by global geopolitics. Hmm. Character building, um, uh, wish for guru, um, geopolitics and the complexity of uh, uh, geopolitics, especially in today's world, they are directly relevant to any entrepreneurship or any entrepreneur's uh, vision and realization of any part in the world today. It's so connected. It's domestic market, international market, but still connected, still very well connected. You have talked about Amrit Kaal. Uh, most people don't really understand what Amrit Kaal really means and, and its relevance uh, to India today. And this is for my own personal learning, because after so many of accomplishment, you suddenly have chosen to be an entrepreneur. And not a kind of an entrepreneur. You want to cultivate the culture of entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship in deep tech and within deep tech with one of the focus areas, aerospace and defense. And I've seen your journey. We, we met uh, before one of the toughest thing to do anywhere in the world, but more tough in India. Nobody has done it now and you have done it. So there are several elements. I want you to connect these elements of character, education, entrepreneurship, geopolitics, aerospace and defense in, in the overall, uh, this beautiful word of uh, Amrit Kaal. But first demystify Amrit Kaal for us. 
you know so uh, <clears throat> because we uh, you know it's like this that uh, when you have made all the arrangements for a marriage hmm. then uh, thereafter the marriage has to culminate hmm. so amrit kal is like this See, today we have the pieces in the right places now you have to culminate this with actually realizing the vision of a developed india a vikshit bharat or you know uh, something which you know there is absolutely no reason i mean we were called sone ki chidiya hmm. i mean we, we were the richest country in the world hmm. and people were absolutely amazed wonder struck at the kind of wealth india possessed which mm. was created by people of this country mm. and from where from there to becoming one of the poorest countries in the world mm. so amrit kal is a period for us to re- re- reclaim our heritage to reclaim our economic growth ajay ji even today there are it's it's very interesting so here i will name cities okay if you go and talk to a mumbai private equity person or a person who invests in listed companies they are bullish about aerospace and defense they say look you know time has come because they have made money in last 12 years in listed companies and if you can make money in listed companies contrary to the consumption economy which all vcs are, uh, are if you go to bangalore and you talk to a venture capitalist in bangalore they don't understand that they say we haven't figured out manufacturing you are talking about aerospace and defense ravi um very difficult we may do some exceptional deal based on founder bed because founder is great either from education perspective or he has been operator we'll see that as a business but we don't have a thesis two reasons one we don't want to write that thesis because we don't want to understand that sector because other sectors are lucrative other things you know defense itself we don't even have fundamental answers is it viable to create an ecosystem of entrepreneurship in defense till now i have given them two answers first i first it is it is kind of a sub definition of amrit kal i said look there is a periodic table most wars have been fought because of that periodic table now geopolitics is forcing the driving force if you don't understand periodic table and if you don't connect geopolitics with periodic table you will not be able to create large companies out of it and especially you will not be able to expand uh, within india in a domestic large market or outside also because it is becoming relevant you know china plus strategies etc etc are becoming very very relevant today and uh, friend relation relationships are friend relationship but trade commerce manufacturing capabilities are becoming key to that so that, that is one answer they respect that uh, answer but they don't act on it the second one which is provoking them and which i say if you look purely india as a defense uh, 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 consumption country per se and and if i just give you a mathematical view of 2% swing if that 2% swing which we are importing happens within india the market is so big just for 2% swing and that is provoking them but still kavach is the only fund with a clear thesis with a focus area of aerospace and defense uh uh no this is a selfish part of me i would like you to say something to them especially to them who who want to do this but but they are kind on a fence how do we bring these guys and say that look you may not like to do not everyone is as courageous or as knowledgeable or as much a person who has deep understanding of aerospace and defense but at least do an allocation at least have a thesis at least have your investment committees uh to address uh, aerospace and defense companies or to someone brave one saying that hey you are doing a fund one you know you may do a 250 million dollar fund but do 50 million dollar fund for aerospace and defense it's actually a beautiful opportunity so i'm summarizing one view mumbai view listed companies we have made tons of mumbai you talk to uh, you know people in south mumbai they say we love aerospace and defense tell us more tell us more and they probably will also start investing in unlisted companies as the index matures uh 
Bangalore venture capitalists, you know, we are very happy, you know, with uh, consumption based or internet consumption based uh, SaaS to, to an extent SaaS. But, but, but at least few of them, not all of them, but few of them who are in friends. And you are an example. What do you say to them? So, you know, <clears throat> first of all, uh, I want to start by saying that, you know, defense we, we see defense as basically the market which India offers. But if you look at the global defense and aerospace, it's a single market, which is controlled by four or five countries. It's a trillion dollar market. It is not uh, the $15 billion market that we look mm -hmm. in India. It's a trillion dollar market. And the point is we are not part of that market yet. Mm -hmm. However, this market is also very geopolitically driven. Mm. And the way the geopolitics of the world is shaping up and the way India's overall growth and positioning in the world is changing, today large parts of the world are looking towards India for their defense needs. One of the major reasons for that is that uh, traditional suppliers of which US, China, Russia, are big part of countries see them all all of them having political agendas behind their supply of arms and ammunition among the major countries in the world india possibly is one of the few countries where they see neutrality fairness mm. and much greater uh, you know depend you know trustworthiness and that is great strength for india when it will come Second is today, India is also seen as a country whose technological prowess is advancing and therefore the confidence that we can buy from India. This was something which was not there. So the point I'm making is, one, there is a huge big market out there which is not fully recognized uh, when it comes to defense. We, we continue to look at the Indian market. The second point I want to make is the policies that government have said and you know not enough credit is given to that you know have been absolutely transformative uh, the decision that for the indian market 75 percent of your budget is today used for only procurement from india mm. has added to the growth of this market mm. uh, in a big way the fact that we have positive indigenization list, which basically mm. see, says that those items will not mm. be imported from outside and which runs into, if you look at the platforms and the systems and subsystems, it runs into thousands of items, mm. provides a huge opportunity for uh, Indian players to actually excel in those. And uh, these are important policy decisions, transformative policy. The third thing is, you know, in the end, uh, the fact that government has shown and the armed forces have shown increasing willingness because this confidence has come that when we talk of buying from India, it is not about buying the second best. There has been a change in the mindset of the armed forces within India, which is the willingness to buy from Indian sources, hmm. especially those who are technologically advanced is also making a huge difference. So all in all, I think all these factors actually enable the ecosystem in a fairly big way. And uh, I think uh, going forward, you know, what is happening is that, I, I'm not saying that everything that needs to have happened has happened. We still have to continuously make sure that we promote newer innovations and encourage newer innovations and government has to play a big role in it. But I think we are seeing critical mass which is developing and uh, it's a big opportunity much bigger than some of the traditional sectors uh, SaaS possibly will mm. you know with the artificial intelligence mm. now people may have yes. to look for something else yes. because SaaS is uh, yes. possibly uh, yes, you know uh, now tapering absolutely. so so I think we'll have to you know people have to realize these are the new opportunities and I'm sure Bangalore will uh, sooner than later uh, change its mind <laughs> So well, thank you, uh, Ajayji. We um, we are blessed to have you. It's an honor mm -hmm. and privilege uh, to. But before uh, uh, we uh, close this conversation and several more to come, uh, it's an Independence Day. Uh, you have demystified uh, Amrit Kaul for us. 
uh, I hope everyone has received clarity about the path uh, towards Vishwa Guru. Uh, we would like you to give message, uh, not only to students of Rishwood University, but overall to youth of this particular country on this Independence Day uh, about uh, the future years to come and future years to build this uh, country and take it forward, uh, Ajay ji. 40 years back, I graduated from IIT Kanpur. And that time when people graduated, everyone, most people used to go to US and they used to talk about the American dream. Hmm. And several of my colleagues hmm. possibly have lived the American dream. Hmm. I think a student or a graduate person graduating today hmm. doesn't aspire to live the American dream. In fact, it is a time when he can have his Indian dream hmm. and live it. Hmm. And that is where he has the big opportunity. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.